you're listing your client success, not you're listing your lead. I am the my listing, my lead guy. They charge me to put my own face on my own listing. And then if I don't pay the ransom, they send my leads on my listings to somebody else. Welcome to the Tom Story Show with Steve Karish and Tom Story, where we discuss everything real estate or whatever else is on our minds. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Tom Story Show. We appreciate you being here. Uh, this week's guest is Catherine McIntosh, and she lives in Toronto, but currently in Winnipeg, going to a CFL game tonight. So shout out to the Bombers, who I hear Steve uh, hates, which is which is great that he's got passion for a sport other than just UFC. Uh, Catherine is the founder and CEO of Listed, which is a real estate app uh, I love. Uh, full disclosure, I don't own any part of Listed. This is not sponsored. I'm having you here because I I am a real estate agent that has access to all the systems. And I'm telling you this, like truthfully, I use Listed as my main portal to figure out what's going on because it's easier to use. So I, I want to spend you know a lot of this episode really getting into that because I think our audience is going to love learning about it. And we'll put a link in the description that people can download it for free if they'd like. But I want to figure out like how we got to this moment. So Catherine, first of all, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. So for people, like, let's just get a general sense. Let's start with you. How did sure. you get to this point? Because I know you have a real estate license, but I think you kind of just got that to make sure you can make a better <laughs> app. So walk me through how we got to this moment. Yeah. I mean, we all have a drive that we sort of figure out when we're born. And I always wanted to fix broken things, you mm. know, so I naturally, well, actually went toward politics because what better way to try and fix things. <laughs> but then it led me to art and design, right? Yeah. Even when we think Steve's of Steve's like wife also, that's her goal in life too. I've heard her <laughs> say, try and fix broken things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck. No, <laughs> no. I'm sure she's wonderful. Um, so actually, even going back to ancient times and La Lascaux and, and and cave painting, right? Yeah. The visionaries of the future have tried to look at where we're going uh, how, in order to make where we are now better. Okay. So for me, uh, I basically am a technology and design person. So I'm always looking at user experience design. And I was literally walking down the street and saw this cute little white house and thought, oh, Wow. You know, that feeling that you get that's indescribable mm -hmm. and never having thought about real estate before, the first thing I did was call the number on the side. And then I promptly got the front desk, right? I thought I'd get the agent who would be waiting around the corner to show me in. And actually, I had to walk to the end of the street to figure out what street I was on and put it together with a number so the front desk person could even tell me what it yeah. was. Mm -hmm. Then they were going to page somebody to talk about it. And I thought, page, are we in 1982? And then I thought, why didn't I just Google it? So you two will laugh here because I didn't know anything about what was going on then. But I Googled it and I thought, wow, how are 5,000 different people selling this house page after page on Google of this little house I was in front of? Then I, then I, and, and every site that I went to, not knowing who to call or what to do, was a wall of contact, right? Mm. Oh, put my name, my information, my phone number, my email before they even know like I even know anything about the house or them. And I thought, this is a really terrible experience. I mean, I later found out it's because half of it's lead gen, right? It's not actually helping me get in the house. And so I thought, this is broken. I want to fix it. I just want a little button that I push and find everything about it and have the person who can help me, help me achieve the goal of getting the place. And what year was that? When, when did you see that little house? Oh my gosh, that would have been about... 2013. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you, you've thought about this for a while and now we're, you know, 10 years into the future. And have yeah. you feel like we've, we've solved the broken system or is there still work to do? What's really, what's really interesting is it's hard to solve because it's one of these interests, uh, industries like finance or health. It's highly regulated for good reason for, for, for protection. I mean, anyone who's been on Facebook marketplace knows mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a crazy thing, right? Like you want 
reliability and consistency of data. So the one thing I've discovered on this journey was that like realtors themselves didn't have a magic button to push. That was my per- first epiphany, which is why I thought we need to create something different than all the other companies who sort of saw, whoa, real estate is leaving money on the table. Why don't we make a great technology and then capitalize on it by becoming a brokerage or making a direct to consumer app that just captures them as leads and then puts them through the process? I thought someone has to come along and really make a tool that helps a consumer cooperate and align the interests with someone who's really just there to help them, you know, who mm-hmm. they can choose. And then funny enough, real estate boards have the same challenge. I don't know if people, sometimes even agents understand that there in North America are 550 different real estate boards. <laughs> so when you're in your MLS, like you're with a brokerage, but In one MLS, all the brokerages participate so that you with your clients have all the listings. You never really have all the listings because the MLS is bound by its own data. So the minute you want to look in Vancouver, you can't go there unless you and your clients go onto some other system. So the industry itself is regulated, which is good because we want reliable, consistent, accurate data. But that really causes fractalization and lack of kind of movement Mm -hmm. in a world where technology has just made us boundless and opened borders, right? You should be able to work with your clients in the same way. Have you found that dealing with these real estate boards has been a challenge? Let's put it that way. Uh, You know, Treb, you know, it's a slow moving you know, operation. It's huge. So I understand. Um, Steve always likes to say that didn't Fraser Valley real estate board like start the whole thing, Steve, or something? Uh, Fraser Valley real estate board's been innovators since the beginning. Like they created web forms, right? Oh, okay. That's what it was. So yeah, it, it, web forms up until uh, Korea gave it away, didn't give it away, was run out of the basement on 104th Avenue by three guys, right? Like it was a great, yeah. great, great thing. Um, but I'm interested to see this come out because we in, in my market anyway, we're much, the boards are much more collaborative. Like we don't have, for instance, um, the double listing thing that you guys do where you can post it on two different boards. You have to post it to the board in BC of where the property is listed. Makes sense. So, so I can sell anywhere in the province legally. I could sell in Penticton if I wanted to, but it goes on the Penticton, whatever that is. And uh, I think it's the association of the interior realtors or something. It goes on their board. It doesn't go on the Fraser Valley board, which is like a struggle that I just wish Ontario could, could get over. Um, and I don't take this the wrong way, but so we didn't have to go to private companies to try and figure out how to do this better. Right. But that is right. like, it sounds like that's like a solution to just the bureaucracy of, didn't say that word, right? Um, of just a system that doesn't collaborate well together, even though, I mean, Treb is so big. It would make a ton more sense if you guys had that rule. Like, listen, if you're going to, if you're going to post on this, um, in this board area, then you have to post on this board. But it sounds like maybe this is a, a solution. In the meantime, yeah, actually, BC's figured a lot of it out when, well, you know, to go back to your original question, Tom, I never imagined I would ever be a realtor. But when I saw that wall of, you know, websites, I realized this is really complex and confusing. So Mm -hmm. I actually got my real estate license so I could figure it out. Like any good artist sort of becomes an anthropologist because you really need to try on the pain point. So whether it's TREB or whether it's, you know, real estate, other real estate boards across Canada or in the U.S., there is a standards body called the Real Estate Standards Organization, RISO, in the U.S. So I thought, wow, why don't I get involved at a volunteer level and join them? Because they pass all the data down to the boards. Mm. So actually, when I was uh, talking to Tim Yee and the, some of the people in, in Vancouver from their various boards, they're like, we don't even have the problem you guys have in Ontario because... Uh, we have we already have a universal property identifier which stops duplicate and triplicate data you know and allows input at a single board but 
I think to go back out to a higher level is that no matter how you cooperate or if it's more challenging, you know, people on a real estate board are generally realtors who are active and volunteering their time and meet 12 times a year and they're not technology experts. So I think, Steve, to your point, there's always going to be a gap unless there is partnership and alignment with the experts that are actually focused on technology. So I think the reason for being, like the business model essentially behind the technology really matters. And what I pinpointed for us was that if a company that is involved in prop tech or real estate technology doesn't support organized real estate, it's a lose-lose for everyone. Mm. And so that's our key value offering Mm -hmm. is we're not a brokerage. We're not an MLS. Oh, and just one last point. Mm -hmm. If our vision ultimately is that your client could stand anywhere in the world, tap a button, that magic button and the property would just pop up through your agent And I believe a professional realtor who's a member of a board should be able to join one board and be connected to all boards, right? Mm -hmm. There should just be data from everywhere. There shouldn't be data shares and challenges. You should be choose the board you're with and be connected to a professional platform that then gives your clients a seamless real estate experience with all the data. So is part of, and this is going way inside baseball, I apologize for anybody, is is part of the challenge in Ontario the PID or, or lack of a PID? Like, is there not a property identifier number in Ontario as the same way there is in BC? And Tom, uh, well, answer that yes. Is there a PID in Ontario or no? Yes, there is. Oh, okay, no, there it's is. not shared. Well, there's a couple problems um, there. One okay. is that this is too technical probably, but it's a string yeah. versus an integer. So essentially an agent could just type the wrong number, right? Mm-hmm. And then you've got the wrong property ID. So you can't synthesize a property ID. And it goes, the, the problem is so vast. Do you know when you order something on Amazon, you put in your address and no matter how you type it, it says this address you mean? And you're like, yep. Yeah. So it knows it's always your address. Can you imagine that when you're putting in a property, Tom, or your you know, admin or broker just put, putting in a property, it's also a string. Mm. So you could have 3807, 2230 Lakeshore Boulevard West as three or four separate properties yeah. every yeah. time it's listed. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. And that can all be solved. I mean, yeah, I'm on a committee that is helping solve that, you know, with RESO, but it's mm-hmm. challenging. We've... um. So- Sorry, so Tom. Yeah. Oh, are we gonna? I'm, no, I'm gonna go, for it, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. So, just so everybody understands the inner working of it, I love this stuff. This is fun for me. Yeah, it's um, because it's our day to day, right? So, yeah. there's when you list a property or sell a property in BC, anyway. There's the address, but as yeah. you just highlighted, the address could be one two three Street. It could be one two three St. It it could be one, two, three dash street. Like it, it could be whatever, right? So if it's entered wrong, your data is only as good as the person entering it. Maybe the postal code changed in between this listing and the last listing, something changes. Then we have something called the legal description. The legal yeah. description is what you um, are, like your actual address means nothing to the land titles. The yeah. land title, they only care about the legal description. Some of them are uh, 20 characters. Some of them are a paragraph. Long. Right? Super, super long. But then we have something called a PID or a property identifier. Yep. And that's like, I think in BC it's a nine-digit number. And that is just a nine-digit number. So if that repeats, like there's, there's, there's no like numbers in the wrong spot or letters or anything. If that repeats then you know you've got a duplicate, right? Yeah. So so you just, at that point, those are the three things that we can verify all against each other because maybe the PID is wrong, actually, or maybe the legal description is wrong. But if the other two, it's kind of like a triangle to make sure you're actually even selling the right property in the first place. Yeah, and so there's something that's yeah. gone on with with BC where they've gone, okay, this is, so I kind of haven't thought about it from this point of view before, but there's something where everybody's gone, okay, we're going to identify these and only have them once. And it looks like, like still to me that I didn't even know until like a year ago when Tom told me that 
like there can be multiple listings. And then I was actually Googling uh, a realtor that I was dealing with in Ontario. And there was, I was like, he's got a lot of listings property. Like why is this property on his website multiple times? And with different prices or at different moments, depending on what the board has put through. Yeah. It's confusing. Uh, actually not to get into the politics of it, but no, we'll actually, do that. go for it. The, go for it. <laughs> one, of the, one of the challenges is that in some jurisdictions, uh, you know, the people who serve up the parcel ID, and then there's a dash, which can be, you could have a, a property that has three parcels. Cause one is a parking spot. You know, one is the actual home. Um, uh, one is a electric car charger. <laughs> so there can actually be different parts to the parcel and passing along that number is considered intellectual property. And the reason it's considered intellectual property, right, is because, oh, uh, we can charge for it. So at some point, it comes down to who's paying for what Mm -hmm. in terms of, so, you know, business model keeps continually coming into the real estate space because unfortunately, there's just so much money at stake for everyone, right? This episode of the Tom Story Show is brought to you by Realty Ninja. Hey, real estate agents, I bet you didn't get into the real estate industry to try to become a web developer. Realty Ninja will help you build a beautiful website for your business without becoming all techie, because me and Steve are certainly not techie. They'll set up your entire site for you. They'll migrate the content from your current site and they'll take care of all the back end, switching the domains, all the things that you don't want to do, they'll take care of for you. Their team of in-house designers will make your new site match your current brand and help you stand out from your competitors. Best of all, Realty Ninja offers a free unlimited trial that lets you build out your website and they do not charge you until you're ready to launch. That's right, they are so confident in their product and that you're going to love the website that you build with them. They will not charge you until it's ready to launch. They don't even take your credit card details. Listeners of the Tom Story Show will not only get an unlimited trial before you launch, but if you go to realtyninja.com slash Tom, you will get 20% off your first year after you launch. A beautiful, functional, and professional website is absolutely a must in today's real estate landscape and Realty Ninja delivers. So go to realtyninja.com slash Tom for 20% off your first year. That's realtyninja.com slash Tom. And now back to the podcast. Why do you feel like some of these other companies, and let's use an American example because they haven't really succeeded in Canada, which is Zillow is the big one, right? And they've created a, now I know in the States, the MLS is a totally different situation. We've talked about this on the show before, but they created a better experience for the consumer. And then they made all their money by selling the leads back to the realtors. And it's like, you you know, they would say like, you know, they sent out this many leads and it was like, I don't know, 50. 15 million leads and only like 6 million properties actually sold or something. So like there's obviously something wrong here or they're sending them all to the same people. Do you think that we had the same issue in Canada where someone had to come in that wasn't a board and made a better experience for the consumer? Because Realtor.ca I think is okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not going to say terrible things, but I think it's pretty good, right? And it's it's done a good thing for the industry but it's not like the best user experience of all time. So can we rely on the boards or do we need, you know, someone like you to come in and have an issue, think about ways to solve it. And then 10 years in the future, I think you've done it, but I obviously it's still a daily battle in terms of now getting active users on the app, making sure that not just the real estate industry knows about it, but that, you know, buyers and sellers know about it. And that's why I want to have you here today. So that more of the general public, would like understand why listed so powerful. Thank you. Uh, oh my gosh, what a great question. I want to break it down into three parts. And I want okay. to start by saying the number one thing that absolutely 100% has to happen and that everyone should care about is that the consumer is number one. There'd be no real estate industry if it wasn't right. for the consumer. And one of the challenges about the industry itself cooperating is that the focus is on what either the MLS or the brokerage or the entity gets out of it. Mm -hmm. So one of the challenges with, you know, even gaps with MLS is being able to serve, you know, members that are on borders, like in different cities or have access to listing data and, and listings. 
is that um, somebody else needs to come in and solve it who's also not competing. So the challenge is that in the industry itself, a lot of the companies, it's just easier to become a brokerage. Zillow eventually became a brokerage Mm -hmm. and whatnot. But I think if we just peel it back for a second and just look at business models, because there's only four. There are only four right now, essentially. Um, It's either an ad portal, a brokerage, an MLS technology, or something put out by the individual realtor. So let's just look at ad portal. If I asked you, like, let's have an example of an ad portal. I don't know if it would roll off the top of your tongue, but you've just said it, right? Realtor.ca. We don't think of Realtor.ca as an ad portal, but... What's funny is Realtor.ca was created by realtors so that the buyers could find the seller and the one agent would have the buyer and the seller and be able to figure out the deal. Mm. But then ironically, we just made a law in Ontario at least (laughs) that, um, and and I think you guys were ahead of the game in BC about who represents who and not having double ending or multiple representation, right? So it's really interesting on the one hand to make a portal where it's just a common, commonly held belief as a person, I, I should get the real, the, the realtor that's representing the property, but they're the one person who is, has a fiduciary or legal responsibility to represent the seller. Mm. Like, would you get divorced from somebody and then like use the same lawyer? Like, I, I don't know. It's just interesting how that happens. Mm. So the second business model is is again, awkward because it's a brokerage. We'll just become a brokerage, like Zillow became a brokerage. And then in each city in Canada, there'll be an app that everyone thinks is just an app, but it's actually a brokerage. And in in Ontario, there's one. And then in BC, there's another. And actually in Halifax, there's another. So they're very regional, actually. They're not like Zillow, who who kind of took over America. Um, But the model there is again, just lead generation. So I don't think the public realizes, you know that thing with Facebook when the the product is free, like you're the product. That's really, really true in real estate because now just everything you touch, everything you click when you just talk and sitting in your car half the time, then your phone's serving serving you up an ad. So your your data is just free and out there. So, So it's really challenging as a brokerage when the whole point is to capture consumer leads to make the brokerage grow. And one of the things that's interesting is a brokerage can join multiple MLSs. Uh So where an MLS is bound, Uh brokerages aren't. So look at some of the most amazing brokerages. I'm not going to name them, but there's one that started out with 700 agents and now has nearly 200,000. And they recognized this. So they're just going into as many locations as possible because And I actually think this is the biggest threat to the MLS because they're now more powerful and have more listings because they're connected to all the data than your actual real estate board, which I'll come back to that because it's one of the things we offer to the MLS to solve that. But uh, the other example is then, you know, you, uh, Tom and Steve, you probably both have an app, you know, a front end application that you can share with your clients that comes directly from your MLS, which we should all just presume is the best. How can that application, even let's just give it some credit and say it was the best, mm-hmm. not compete with these other brokerages that actually joined all these boards and have more data? Like who cares how good something is if you don't have all the data? Right. So it's, it's super challenging. And then the very last one I said about the agent having their own website. Yeah. You're off selling real estate, you two. How can you put $50 million into making an amazing app? How, could, would, you, how would you even know where to start? So to serve the consumer, that last thing is we thought, what if we could make the million-dollar app like, like you know how Facebook is so trusted now, you can log into your bank practically with it. <laughs> um, what if we made the ultimate real estate app that serves the consumer through their agent of choice, regardless of brokerage, regardless of MLS? And in the case of MLSs, now allows you to connect to all the MLSs through your own agent and through each other. It's it's actually interesting because um, I just had a conversation with another realtor that actually messaged me about our website. And they said, I noticed on your website, you have all of your listings, but you don't have a search option to just search 
Like I don't have an IDX on my website other than my own properties. And I said, yeah, you right. know, I, I can't compete with, with realtor.ca and all the other, I can't like my old website had it for 10 years and maybe five people reached out on a random listing ever. That wasn't mine that went out of right. the way. Like it's for them to end up on my IDX versus realtor.ca, Royal page, Rem whatever you want to talk about is just so low. And then I always want to come back to here to the consumer. So exactly. again, I'm not going to put any names out there. We're just going to say there are brokerages that have created good user experience products um, that the user just believes is this is just the easiest way to find out. Let's put this simply what my neighbor sold for, right? Yeah. I like this app. I can type in the address. I now know what, what my no neighbor sold for. This makes me feel good. I have inside information. I didn't use to have access to this, right? Yeah. Okay, well, I continue to search, and then one day I see a house I actually like, and I click view. So walk me through. I know I, I know the answer to this, but walk me through <laughs> who's reaching out to them. Yeah. And then just what we would need to know about the person reaching out to them and that who they work for. Just walk me through that. Okay. Okay, on all these levels, right before I, we walk you through that, what you're finding on these other sites, Tom, are – even if those sites that are now capable of having all the listings, mm -hmm. they're capable of having all the listings, but they still might bias in what they show you because they might want a preference to mm -hmm. listings that they want to sell you. Mm -hmm. right? I so just opted out of such a website here <laughs> in a very, very, very prominent website here in BC. And um, I, after they sent me their new pricing and business model and everything else, I was like, I'm not playing your game. This is, I'm out. It's really, really bad. Like we made at a values level at our core pillars of like, you know, integrity. And we just said, what would love do? It wouldn't give a consumer a property that an agent paid to boost, you mm -hmm. know, that showed up because someone was going to benefit by selling it or, you know, mm -hmm. kept a property out of the market for some other reason. So, yeah. So that's the first thing is that even when the capability is there, the possibility is still limited because of inside interest. We'll just call it. Um, and so the second thing is that number one, back to my real estate, uh, sorry, like realtor.ca example of where you expect to see the listing agent when all of a sudden a better user experience is innovated and a consumer just finds a website with a convenient hook, like what is this going to sell for or what's going to happen there? Or how much is my home worth? What's happening is they think the realtor at the contact bottom of that property is a listing agent. Mm -hmm. Just because of conditioning with realtor.ca, they think it's the listing agent. And it actually comes from this philosophy, your listing, your lead, which if you just listen to that, it's like you're representing the seller. Your listing, your client success <laughs> should be the mantra, not your listing, your lead, because your lead is then, you know, talking about the vantage point of organized real estate. So what's happening on these other sites for the most part is they came into being to capture leads because yeah. then their agents are their actual clients, not consumers, right? The more agents they have doing deals instead of where you might pay to be part of a good technology, have a great website, et cetera. When you're an agent who maybe doesn't know how to get business, doesn't have any clients, Anyone who's maybe used you isn't going to refer you. There's a reason that repeat and referral agents don't even have to advertise, right? Because it's repeat and referral. So what tends to happen is when you're with one of these other apps is that you're kind of with an agent who's starting on a half tank of gas. Like, oh, let's go on a road trip. Okay, no, you know what? We won't fill up. We'll, we'll just spend half of it right away because, you know, I had to give it away to join this company that instead of... Like, I won't name names, but I know you're with a great brokerage. Like, you want an agent to be part of a brokerage that is, like, a strong pillar of the temple, right? Has legal, has industry expertise, is supportive, has, like, collaborative other agents that you're, as a consumer, going to have an agent who shows up at a negotiating table and you actually want the person representing the other side to know you, like you, and respect you. Mm -hmm. 
So it's not just the quality and value of the agent you have, but who they choose to work for and with represents all kinds of choices they make, how much they're willing to spend, the resources they have, et cetera. I was actually going to say, so I actually, someone that listens to this podcast that was a listener of the podcast, I met with them, I had lunch with them. They they will be listening to this. This would be interesting to get your perspective on what they should do. So they, they reach out to me. They're like, you know, I'm thinking about this big career change or thinking about getting into real estate. So I sat down with them. We had a coffee one morning at my office and I said, here's my advice. And then they came back and they said, Hey, now I've got my license. I'm at the point. This is someone brand new to real estate. I'm at the point of looking to join a brokerage. And they've interviewed, let's say, with like two of the lead generation model companies where they guarantee to give you opportunity, but you pay them a fee to obviously do that. And then one or two of the more established big brands that they don't promise you that they're going to give you business, but they give you the training. And Steve, this all goes back to your like catch Mm -hmm. a fish versus learn, give a fish versus Mm -hmm. learn how to fish situation. Yeah. And because I've seen agents that start at the lead gen companies and then within two years kind of go to the bigger brand when they don't need that guaranteed support, if that makes sense, like opportunity. Just your perspective as someone brand new, because I'm sure you've seen this, you know, is there a is there a preference to go to the we give you opportunity versus we give you structure? Because I can tell you just these are just that theirs are what they are. You look at the top 100 agents in Toronto and they mostly work for the big brands, just yeah. production wise. Just saying, seriously. Yeah, they, they do. Yep. So you the numbers speak for themselves, like you said. So basically until an agent like gets good and then can join a quality brand, right? they need the opportunity because they don't have the know-how. But I would say that essentially whether you're new, so this person – whether you're new or you're seasoned, there are two things that make you successful in anything in life, even with your own children. Time and attention. Mm. Nothing is free. There's just no free lead sitting there. It depends. You know, everything is about the reason you get into it. So when I was trying to understand how I stood in front of that house and there were 5,000 agents selling this property, and then I hit lead forms and realized, oh, agents are paying for lead generation, which is a big waste of money for them. And I'm a lead on every single one of these things that I fill in. And this just feels like so far from me just getting into that house and buying it. Like Mm -hmm. I actually felt mad for the, the seller. So what I did when I was researching everything was I actually identified brokerages by business model and classified them. And then when you look at somebody's business model, you can immediate ta- immediately tell what's driving uh, their values, their, their alignment, et cetera. So as you illuminated, when you have a model that is kind of free opportunities without the experience, the minute you become good, you want to leave. So it just kind of is a perpetually bad business model, I personally think. And Mm -hmm. the the challenge of that is we have realtors, as you know, in Toronto showing up, their own client had more data than them or information that they didn't even have. And this technology one day is this and tomorrow Mm -hmm. it'll be someone else. It's a flash in the pan. So back to your person all day, hands down, join a quality team, a quality brokerage, and just start learning. You know, between time and attention, the third (laughs) key element is hard work. It's just hard work. You know, there was a company that was actually doing fairly well in a very, very upward trending market in Toronto a few years ago that no longer exists. Yeah. And all of their agents have gone to other brands like them. And the way that I just look at it, and this is just my opinion, right, is like you're renting your business. You're just relying on somebody else and you're not building the core pillars and foundation that you need to have that repeat and referral. Like me and Steve talk about this a lot. We make YouTube videos. We meet a lot of people from this podcast. Still, the core of everything we do is do a good job for that person. They talk about you to their friends and family. Like that's even Steve. Can you believe it? People like him and they and they refer him business. But that's it. If I could only choose one, I shut down my if you said to me, Tom, repeat a referral or your YouTube channel, YouTube channel shut down tomorrow. It's not even close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything is relationships. I mean, that's why you know, we're here together right now. Everything is about a relationship. In fact, 
it's so funny because we made listed for agents and clients to be connected and collaborate because mm-hmm. it happens in this three-way uh, scenario. If you're not connected back to time and attention, you're not aligned, you don't have a combined goal, and there, therefore you can't achieve it. So what is technology? It should be, it should be invisible. It's a conversation. So when you or one of your clients taps, you know, star on a listing so that they're notified when it sells, or if you tap star on a sold listing, you get notified when it comes back on the market, right? Oh, I didn't actually you know, know that. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. There's all these sort of great little things that yeah. keep you connected, save you time, but it's a conversation and the connection and conversation do one important thing, keep you in a relationship mm. with each other. Because no matter how you cut it, Technology <laughs> is just an amplifier or brings you leverage. Everything is about the relationship in real estate and it always will be. Steve? Okay. Let me, let me, yeah. Okay. So, um, we're half an hour in. I feel like we know each other. I'm going to stop being the nice guy now. Let me see if we can figure this out. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So I am the, my listing, my lead guy. That's me. Okay, great. I have a listing. There was a, I, I, as I said, I opted out of a, a lead generation platform that I've never, ever barely done a deal from, probably one in my whole career. And they charge me, they charge me to put my own face on my own listing. Crazy. Right. And then if I don't pay the ransom, they send my leads on my listings to uh, somebody else. So if you are that person looking, um, now I'm going to tell you how archaic these people are. They used to be a web, uh, a newspaper. Now they're a website. Okay. So, you know, they're, they're adjusting slightly. Um, so when you were that person standing in front of that house and you searched, they're probably number one in my market. When you search, they're probably coming up as that listing. They now either press that button and they're getting whoever paid the most. Right. That's who they're getting. Uh, or yeah. a revolving door of three people who paid the most, which is even more of a scam if you ask me. Yeah. They like, uh, and this is actually, I believe the CEO of Zillow went on record. So this is not me getting in trouble with Zillow and said, we are not innovators in the industry. We are leeches on the industry. We are causing uh, realtors greater expense. So we're just trying to siphon off of the commissions. That's all we're trying to do. We're not actually trying to innovate anything. And we will never be different and, unless we can change that. Yeah. So with all of that preface, I have no idea about your app. I've never used it. I Love don't it. know why I would use it. I don't know where I would use it. I don't know how I would get access. I don't know how you are different. How the heck is anything different if I go on listed? Yep. Uh, so let's say I am on listed. I don't have a realtor. Yeah. Is that, that might be the case. Let's say I download uh, Tom Story Show is the best podcast on Sundays in Canada for real estate. And as a result, I'm like, okay, I like what this Catherine lady's saying. I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to download. Now what? I see all the listings. Good. Take me from there. Okay, great. Number one, just as a definer between what you described in that other system and, and us. We are not a lead gen platform. So you can't pay to show up. We, we don't give people leads. It's not for leads. It's for connection. So it's, again, alignment. So I think why you do anything matters. But back to being found. Let me turn it around because you're going to answer my question for me beautifully. Who, when they're looking at real estate, should your clients get, Steve? Who should they see on every listing if they have a question? John and or Eric on my team, <laughs> not me. It's, <laughs> it's yes, his team, okay. our team, our team. Okay, but it's you. It's your team. Now, let's say somebody doesn't have a realtor, right? Who, if they're in BC, should your clients, friends, or family member who are going to make that next big decision get if they don't have a realtor? Uh, hopefully me. Exactly. So Listed looked at every way to basically help people without a realtor get a realtor, not because you can pay, not because you pay for a lead, 
we make zero money from people and agents being connected. That was the only way to make sure that that is, has integrity is to be able to not make money from it. So for example, if you have 10 clients and they share listed, everyone who receives that listing or downloads listed or gets your link gets you because you are the person that somebody else who they know and trust and liked uses. They could still not choose you. So back to the model, the business model, and back to the ransom, you called it, which I love. Mm -hmm. We actually stepped back and took eight months because I had a question from a realtor that said, okay, what if I choose to try listed and I take the backbone of my business, which are my clients, and I put them in this app and then I don't want to pay for it? What happens? And I said, oh. Yeah, I mean, your real estate board just cuts you off if you don't pay your dues, but true, (laughs) you have a choice here. So I decided at that moment, if we are really serving the consumer through organized real estate so they succeed, the consumer succeeds, I want any consumer who wants to work with an agent, regardless of what brokerage they're with, to be able to use it for free. So there is a downgraded version for realtors. So you are never disconnected from your clients. Clients and consumers always have the ultimate and best experience. And realtors just don't have all the comforts and bells and whistles if they don't pay for it. The premium version just basically makes it easier for the realtor, right? Because of course we have to be in business. So whether you are a Tom story or just some new person, you know, it's a meritocracy. We don't make money. It's like you get as thin as often as you ride your Peloton. It's up to you. So it, it basically and Steve's Peloton is is basically <laughs> never been used. So what? No, I'm kidding. He uses it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I love it. So you know, it is really based on those things that. that I said that we value: mm-hmm. hard work and the alignment of the agent and the consumer through time and attention. And then for, so, so, you know, there's, there's someone listening to this that's saying to themselves, oh, okay, this app sounds great. Maybe I'll sign up for it. Link will probably be in the description somewhere for this video. Um, okay. If, if I've already been told in this episode that if I don't pay for something like the Facebook model, then I am, you know, then I, that you're using my data. So right. for yours, if if listed doesn't make money in the traditional way that a brokerage portal would or a Zillow would, yep. just just you know to make sure it's clear here, you guys make money because real estate brokerages or agents pay you directly to have the premium version of the app, which then they can share with their clients. That's basically the model, correct? Real estate agents across Ontario are using Tressa Video to increase trust and transparency with their clients. And now for a limited time, you can get your own custom branded video totally for free. It's simple, and here's how it works. Simply refer your broker of record to tressavideo.ca, and when they purchase the broker version for your entire office, tell them to enter the promo code SUMMER at checkout. That's right. Refer tressavideo.ca to your broker of record and get your own custom branded individual or team video totally for free. Refer Tressa Video to your broker of record and they will love you for helping them provide value to their agents. Your coworkers will also love you because now they'll get use of Tressa Video for their business and you will love receiving your very own custom branded Tressa Video totally for free. So tell the powers that be at your office to go to tressavideo.ca and enter the promo code SUMMER at checkout. This offer is valid once per brokerage purchase and for a limited time. A hundred percent. Just okay. like, you know, you might pay for a website or pay for your flyer. It's just a flat fee yep. that's reasonable and not based on who's connected to who or what data is shown. In fact, whether it's an up market or a down market or whatever's happening in the market, it's the same for us. We're like a channel and the okay. content is independent of it. And but to then- Steve's point of how does it work? Like if somebody downloads it or somebody gets listed, they mm-hmm. are going to get like if they just randomly went and downloaded listed and didn't have a connection from an agent, yeah. we asked who should they get? What should they do? So we presumed that agents who put resources into their business, join a great brokerage, you know, understand they should have a choice, not the IDEX feed on your website, but a choice for their consumer 
clients to use, then anyone who's paying for a premium listed, like we just put them in a kind of round robin. If you're in BC and you were on it, like you might just get them, right? That's just because, and I don't think consumers know this, you're actually not allowed to look at any real estate unless it is presented to you through a legitimate real estate brokerage. Mm-hmm through an agent who has agency for that brokerage. So the only listing you could ever see that is not connected to somebody who is going to make money from you looking at it is a for sale by owner. And then they have their other challenges. But, Mm -hmm. you know, any listing is always connected to a brokerage and somebody making money from it. Let's say Steve's wife's friends downloaded listed just going to the app store and they got assigned to someone, but you know they're now they're getting serious about it, and they want to start the process. and want to keep using the app to search. Could they say to the app, "Hey, you know, I got this agent, but Steve's actually who we're going to be working with. Can you adjust us over to Steve? Is that possible?" It's a hundred percent possible, but the consumer themselves and the agent themselves cannot go in that. It's a single agent website, really. Sure. Like back to. The difference for Steve is that, you know, if I don't pay enough, then now my leads on my listings are going to get pawned off to somebody else who's willing to pay more. That can never happen on listed. There's only one agent ever. And everyone's kind of in their right lane. So for example, Steve, if you're an agent in the app and you tap on a listing, you're going to see that Tom's story is the listing agent of that listing, for example, or somebody else Mm -hmm. from another brokerage. But your client taps the same Tom's story listing. And he or she is getting you because you're their agent. Mm -hmm. So for example, back to that problem I alluded to earlier where brokerages join multiple listing services, many of them, and then they kind of become more powerful than even an MLS. um, That changes uh, with listed because all of a sudden now you as the agent can be on listed connected in maybe one case to the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board and helping your clients. And then you can also be connected to Omdrub or ITSO or Cornerstone or whatever other system you're part of. So now you're not giving your clients two different systems and two different apps, which actually then just pushes them back to these competitor brokerage apps because it's a poor experience. The one thing that... um that we've been using it for. So of course our active clients will give them access to it and we can show them how to set up the searches. But where I found it actually be very, very powerful is when we've already sold someone a property and they're just like, yeah, like we'd like to know what comes up for sale in our area. And, and so I can, I can, what I think is cool is like, I can actually pre do the search criteria on mine and I can share it to their, I can just text it to them and then it opens on theirs and they can just save it. And it's like, Hey, there you go. You can get notifications if you want to turn it off because you're not interested. You can do that. I found it's like super powerful for our past clientele as well that doesn't currently have a need to look. But like, let's be honest, like people love looking at real estate listings, even if they're moving or not moving. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, unlisted, you can be up. When is Steve back to your point? When was there a technology where you on a Friday night after a long week of work could actually be in bed at 11 p.m. with your clients on every listing while they're just Mm -hmm. having a glass of wine and searching through properties, you know? Like, it's pretty phenomenal. I get to be (laughs) in bed with my clients having wine. (laughs) (laughs) Some of them, that sounds fantastic. Some of them, maybe not. Um, You know, just the other thing to Tom's point is that, you know, We have to have a bona fide interest in real estate to be looking at real estate. But the fact is that if you live there and have a home, you have a bona fide interest in real estate because everything you do in your is attached to the assets you own. And your home is the largest, usually for most people, the single largest indicator of, of wealth and action. And when I mentioned that you can log into your, your real estate board, I mean, Tom now can just tap a property, you know, get everything he needs through listed, but then log in to Treb and it just looks at his face and to Treb's, you know, kudos to Treb. They've actually switched technologies, which has been painful, but it's actually helped integrate with third party technology companies like us. So it can be an amazing experience. So Tom can log into his MLS, but his clients log into it, just listed and get the front end data. So there's a different experience for agents and clients. Whereas if you're an agent using one of these competitor apps to try and get the data, 
You've got someone else between you, in between you and your clients. You know, you're disconnected from them. You're not connected to your real estate board. And it's a frustrated experience mm -hmm. all around. I, uh, I just find that using it as a consumer, nothing to do with being a real estate agent is just better. Um, I have access yeah. to all the other apps and that that's why I was so passionate about it. And like, you know, I, we, we've known each other for a while, Catherine. Like I remember yeah. when listed was called something else when you first yeah. launched it, like, yeah. you know, it's been a, it's been a long journey. It's really cool to see that, that you guys have grown. And I think you've done such a great job with it. So I also want to go over a few things. Sure. I, I personally have uh, two safe searches set up. I have one where I drew a circle around my house for certain property types. I want to know what comes onto the market. And when I see stuff I like, I favored it and I see what it sells for. Cause it's just, yeah. I could log into my MLS and I could do this, but it's just like, it's just right there. It's so much easier. I also yeah. have one for my cottage property. I only want properties that come up that have waterfront access and yeah. not as much comes up, but it's like kind of excited when I get an email notification from Listy, be like, oh, something came up near my cottage. I wonder what's on the market. So those are things I think people could do, even if they're not actively looking to buy or sell to just stay in the know. You can guess the price on properties, which I think is kind of fun. So that's yeah. that's a nice thing to add it in there. But then the biggest thing that's more recent, and this goes back to real estate boards and the decisions that they make is exclusives. And me and Steve have talked about this in depth on this podcast, yeah. our feelings about the three days and, and everything going on with exclusives. But we were kind of thought that, okay, well, if it's exclusive, you can only do one-to-one -one marketing, like picking up the phone or sending a text to one person. Yep. Now Listed has solved that? We've actually, it's funny. Originally, originally, if we go back to the original problem, well, one quick thing I want to say is when you're doing your, your cottage search, we do mm -hmm. in the filter have waterfront access only. Well, I clicked so it. You didn't, I clicked it. You clicked that? Okay, good, oh, yeah. good, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And compared to these like other apps, you know, you can't just share a save search. You mm -hmm. can't just share a list of listings. So there's all these things that are amplified so that you're actually above in that way. But, you know, back to all the listings and that idea that for a consumer, you want to be giving them all the inventory. Mm -hmm. um, probably two or three years ago, the C three CEOs of three, three different large significant brokerages in Toronto came to us and said, hey, we used to have this system where we could easily share exclusive and coming soon listings between ourselves in brokerage, like from one different brokerage to another different brokerage. And now we can't for various reasons that technology was no longer possible. And so they said, can you, can you make something? And we thought, <clears throat> well, we could, <laughs> it's going to be super challenging and really expensive. Is there really a need? And mm. so then what we discovered is that without us making something, literally agents in certain pockets in certain areas, and maybe you notice this in BC as well, Steve, like, we're coming up with our own MacGyvered solutions like, oh, I'm going to make a Facebook or a Signal chat group or a WhatsApp group. And this is really challenging because now you're taking, if you post a link there, like inter-agent um, group, you're basically putting out your client, your seller's data on a platform that is unregulated completely, right? Um, you don't really know who's seeing it unless you know everyone in the group. and then. The group is always limited by its own technology. So I know on Signal, it's like the group is limited to about a thousand people and same on WhatsApp. So they're all with these challenges. And then of course, the MLSs didn't like that there were these groups because the MLS is the source of truth of all real estate data. So there was talk. We So we, we knew that we needed to build some for these brokerages. But of course, uh, you know, what happened is the brokerages wanted control they, they wanted to have it input by the administrators and have all these things in place, which basically just kept this amazing system we built unused mm. and real posted on chat groups because like, hey, it's way easier to just do some unregulated thing over here than go do this in a regulatory regu regulated way. So the realtor cooperation policy came out January 3rd, 2024, and we thought, wow, this might really be an opportunity where the obstacle is a, so the challenge with two things, the real estate entities wanted to make sure that regular consumers were, were 
making a choice to sell exclusively or off market, knowing full well that might bring them less money, get them less exposure. Like their concern was that regular people didn't understand the downfalls and that maybe a realtor was using exclusive to double ended or, you know, have Mm. personal benefit. So I really love the spirit of the law, which is that all listings should go to the MLS because really, if there's one reliable, consistent source of data, isn't that the best place to go where everybody's cooperating and sharing? It is the tenant of the MLS, cooperation and compensation. Maybe not compensation anymore, depending on what happens. <laughs> At least cooperation. So in the States, you know, when this policy came out, we saw a lot of changes and things are cropping up like these PRNs or po- private real estate networks where people were actually ditching the board and creating mm. their own private network. So we actually saw now nobody's come to us and we've actually realized there is a problem and it's a problem of the MLSs. The MLS has made a policy that could actually be the one thing that like makes organized real estate and brokerages wonder like, should we be part of this? Right. right? And are you telling me that like, if I truly have a client who can't sell on the MLS because they're, they're private and, or, you know, they can't have people in their house. Like a lot of people don't know to be on the MLS. You have to like let people into your house to do showings, right? There can just be reasons. It could even just be that like it's summer, everyone's at the cottage, you know, we're getting it landscaped and putting in new floors while you're away. And then you're going to put it on market in the fall. So the law changed without giving the realtors a way to legitimately and reliably and consistently offer this solution. So what we did is we took the policy and we ingested the rules into listed. So one of the rules is that um, you can share an exclusive or coming soon listing with agents in your brokerage, right? So Tom, if you had an exclusive listing because your clients wanted to do that, like everybody in your brokerage could see it. Yep. The other thing is that you can actually share it with any other agent in a direct one-to-one communication or with any of your clients directly. So what we did is we thought, how can we bake the rules into listed so that an agent could put up an exclusive or coming soon listing and not even have the option of making a mistake. So if you put up a listing, only the people who are able to see it will be able to see it. It's why we joked, um, all the listings are there. You just can't see them. Mm. So so it's it's all based on who has access. So in the case of a exclusive, say you put up an exclusive listing, which by the way, has no three-day rule. There's no three days on exclusive. Exclusive listings cannot be publicly shown, period. Oh, that's okay? coming soon. Period. It's rule. just coming yeah. soon. Okay. And if you have an exclusive and it's the, from the first moment it is publicly marketed, it must go to the MLS in three days. That is the only place, that is the only reason that even applies to exclusives at all. Mm-hmm. It triggers the policy if publicly shown. So I'm listed, if you have an exclusive, immediately all the agents in your brokerage can see it. Your clients never see an exclusive listing ever. If you know about it because another agent had it, you'd have to tell them about it. And if it's not actually an exclusive, like how do you know exclusive or coming soon? A lot of agents don't even know the difference. The difference is if you have a date where you're going to go to the MLS, a known date, even if it changes, you choose coming soon. So say it's going to come out like September 9th because it'll be after Labor Day, you know, that 8th, 7th, and 6th would be a nice weekend before that. So the minute you put it up on listed, say today, August 1st, it's immediately treated like an exclusive listing until the 5th of September. And then at 8 p.m. on the 5th of September, it becomes publicly available Mm. to everyone and then expires right before it goes to the MLS. And if you had tapped like, it would show you a property came back on the market. And so now there's a new category as a consumer using the listed app. There'd be a category. Do I, it's like, it says coming soon on it or something that I I know. Yeah. It's actually really smart because in that scenario, if you put out a listing, like if, if your clients weren't sure about what they wanted to do and or they were coming in the fall, you know exposure is the way. Mm-hmm. So if if they have no reason not to go to MLS and they're getting it prepared, mm-hmm. then all of a sudden, three days before it comes to MLS, it can come out unlisted with this gold coming soon banner. 
You can coordinate that with a a lawn sign that says coming soon, your just listed cards, your newsletter, your social media posts. And then the minute it hits the MLS, everyone will also get a notification. Oh, a property you were following is now on the MLS, right? So it's super exciting in that way. And I think, okay, the one thing, let me try and explain this to you too, because it's so new that when you explain something new, it almost can't be conceived of because it's new. So in that period from say today until September 5th, if we've got this coming soon or exclusive listing, if your clients create a safe search for you know a four bedroom detached home in Leaside, and there's an exclusive listing there from an agent who's outside of either of your brokerages, the opportunity that the obstacle caught, you know, innovated actually for us is that now that listing agent with the exclusive listing is notified by us of all the triggered demand. So mm. we know all the demand. It's like demand intelligence. So we don't tell you, the cooperating agent, and we don't tell the consumer. We basically say to the listing agent, there are 52 agents we recommend you send your listing to in a mm. direct one-to-one communication. And they can do this enlisted by tapping a button. And it's not only is the seller's data owned by the seller through agency of the brokerage, mm-hmm. but every agent who's interested, you can choose to share it with them or mm-hmm. not. And a record of it is kept for both parties that it was shared with. And actually we went one stricter and made it so you can't share it with clients, even though you could share it with clients directly. We just went one layer more strict so that nobody could ever make a mistake and mistakenly share it with a client. (laughs) Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I, Uh, we we put most of our properties on MLS anyways, but I I think think it's it's nice that you've Found it's actually interesting through what you've probably learned. I'm sure you've learned a lot. You could go back to Korea and be like, Hey guys, want to revise a few things? <laughs> actually, you know, back to the MLS being the source of truth. And I think, uh. Steve, I with, with your laughter, you're gonna love this. So, because we wanted to always be the solution that's gonna constantly support the consumer. So, going back to Korea and the real estate boards to say, If we gave you back a data feed of anonymized off-market data so that to get all the data for a member to get all the data, they had to get it through the real estate board always. And for the only little bit of data they couldn't get to be part of this, you have to give it back to them to empower them, make them stronger, you know, to fortify them. And just a final note, when you said, you know, listed or someone else has to solve this, just to put our money where our mouth is, If some other competitor app wanted to have a business model like us and start a new company, kudos to them. Mm. Let's be the tallest poppy. Let's let you agents and consumers make a choice so that innovation is never being stifled. It's not anti-competitive. It's cooperative and based on quality. I haven't um, found a Canadian app that's not disguised as a brokerage like we've talked about, like listed yet. Like I just haven't. So that's why I want to have you on. That's why I use it. That's why Mm -hmm. I recommend it to our clients. Well, no, okay, let's, okay. At least Ontario wise that I'm aware of, there's nothing useful uh, other than listed in terms Mm -hmm. of that's not an actual brokerage, but the consumer doesn't doesn't know that. Steve, you've been quiet for a bit. Before we wrap up, you got any final thoughts? I think it's uh, with all good intentions, your solution for exclusive listings, um, I mean, it's definitely a, a workaround. It's a... A, a, a bright side of it. Um, I still can't believe the whole thing was ever passed in the first place. Uh, big, I said this before, Tom, big shocker. Uh, the real estate industry voted to make the real estate industry mandatory. Um, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a silly thing that was even done in, in the first place. Um, I understand how you're doing it now because I was scratching my head going, don't touch that, don't touch that. And now it's like, okay, we've got a mystery pin within your box. Um, We're not going to tell you it's there unless we reach out to you and tell you it's there. So 
Uh, it's a very creative workaround. I kind of like it. I'm, I'm sure it probably won't get that much use because the the overwhelming majority of folks um, are going to use the MLS anyway, which is normal. Like that's the way it is. Um, I just I'm every time the exclusive thing comes up, I do or I did um, a number of exclusive sales per year. Not many, maybe two or three, for yeah. various reasons. And now that power has been taken away. Um, and I think it's to the detriment of the consumer, uh, or yeah, in this I, case, the vendor, not the consumer. But, um, you know, the I think it's to the detriment of, uh, of which I bitch and whine about on this show all the time. You know, privacy, um, people telling me what to do with my own property, that sort of thing. So it's a very interesting um, workaround that has been a very creative workaround. That is, that is pretty cool. Well, and also to, to to meet our constant goal, which is, you know, to support organized real estate, right? So how do we make something that basically the MLSs don't have that's for them and for their own good? Because the system, although it's creative and has a good workaround, it still is way better to be on the MLS and should make it so that for those few, few listings that mm-hmm. need to be off market, there's a great mm-hmm. solution, like to gain exposure for listings that traditionally couldn't get exposure, right? So you've really helped those people who need that. Um, But yet you've got a system that's like frustrating to use purposefully so that genuine listings that should go to the MLS will go to the MLS, you know, which I just think is so, so important. Catherine, thank you so much for joining us today. This was awesome. I, I really do mean this when I say it. I think you created a very good product. I use it. A lot of our clients use it. If anyone's listening and they want to download one, that if you download it from this episode, again, like we're being transparent about everything, I'll be the agent on it. If you have your own right. realtor and you listen to this, text them and say, yeah, Steve. Maybe I'll be the agent on it. You maybe, know. maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> If you have your own agent that you've worked with forever and you're super loyal and that's all good, by all means, text them and say, hey, I want access to yeah. listed. It's all yeah. good. Whatever way you want to do it, I just think like the consumer should have a better experience. You've created yeah. a product that gives them that. Is there anything I didn't say that, that someone should know if, if they're like, okay, cool episode, interesting. Why should I actually download it? Yeah, yeah. To your point, they're going to get all the listings and they're going to get it through the person they want. And if their realtor happens to not be part of it, any realtor who is invited by their client, like their client tells them about it, immediately gets priority, mm-hmm. immediately gets access and does not have to pay for it for to use it with their client. Like they can be on okay. the downgraded version unless they yep. choose like, oh my God, I love this so much. I, I want to have it. Right. And I, I think the only other thing that I think is really important to say is that con- I don't think consumers understand that organized real estate is run by busy realtors who who don't always even understand how the technology works because there are vendors Mm -hmm. that supply the data to the MLSs and they have to choose them. And it's just this whole opaque thing. So even, even your own agent might not always understand the machinations of why they don't have access to all the listings and why it works this way. So I want to urge agents as well as consumers to vote for what they want by use, right? Like, you do have the power more than ever to make a great thing. And I've always found the real estate boards open to doing something better when they understood like this, this movement movement toward choice of systems is really great, Mm -hmm. right? Like we never want to replace an MLS. In fact, we want to empower it because we think being a part, like a spoke in all these different hubs of MLSs Mm -hmm. is our goal because it strengthens all of them. And we are the connective tissue that join them all together so that, consumers on whole through their own agent have the best experience possible. Well, I think everyone should download Listed immediately before you move (laughs) on with the rest of your day. Catherine, thank you so much for joining us. And I also know, and there's a video on my channel where I show people actually me using Listed, what I use it for, what we use it for, for our (gasps) clients. And when people in the comments have said like, hey, can you tell them this or whatever, you guys actually commented and went in and actually adjusted things in your app based on feedback. So I think that's kind of neat. I just wanted to share that, that, you know, not everything is always 100% perfect. If there's anything people think could be adjusted, you guys are open to having that conversation, correct? Oh, a hundred percent. Remember when you reached out to us because that one person reached out to you and mm-hmm. talked about the buttons on the map, for example. Yeah. Like every single day when we look in the mirror, we try to exercise, eat healthy. We're always changing. We wouldn't be normal if we weren't changing. So the app is a work in progress, like anything great. 
if it's not evolving, it's dying. Yeah. So yeah, we've already made the change. If you go on the app now, you see that we have a, an extra button, which not only was the suggestion to change the spacing between the buttons so that you didn't automatically clear your shape after you drew it. Right. Um, but when we investigated how it worked, thanks to that user that is one of your clients or watches your channel, we thought, why can't you just share without share saving your search? Why can't you just share a shape mm -hmm. with filters? Like if someone calls up Steve and is like, uh, I want to know what's available in kits right now, like came out in the last 10 days that's like in this price range, he could draw it, do the filters and send it to them like that. And then they receive it, right? It's just so convenient. So that's an innovation that came thanks to you. And thanks. you could just, you don't have to be a realtor to do that, right? You could just do that and yeah. send it to your friend right? Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're keeping you here too long. Enjoy the okay. game tonight. <laughs> Hope you have a great time. Um, and uh, thank you so much for sharing about the app today. Uh, I enjoy it. And Steve, I think you'll like it too. Thank you everybody for watching and listening and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you, thank you so much. All right. Well,